We have developed a method to model the distribution of 3D brain MRI volumes with 256 cubed voxels. This large input size means that we can make use of the full resolution of typical MR volumes, as we do not need to downsample images to fit our architecture. We use a two-stage approach where we first model the slices using VAE, and then model the relationship between slices using a Gaussian model that is fit in the latent space. Our two-stage approach gives us a very simple probabilistic model and allows us to easily generate new brain samples. Our results show that our method produces higher quality samples than volumetric CNN methods, as judged by several image metrics. We have also developed a novel segmentation-based evaluation metric and find that our method produces samples that behave more like real brain samples compared to samples from volumetric methods. Thanks. In this work, we focused on deep learning-based reconstruction methods for undersampled MR images to address the variations between the data used for training and the data used at test time. In particular, we wanted to investigate whether correcting for the bias field during reconstruction could improve these deep learning-based methods. So we proposed a joint reconstruction scheme where we used a deep learning-based algorithm to which we incorporated iterative estimations of the bias field such that the estimates of the bias field and of the bias field-free image could improve simultaneously. Our results showed that estimating the bias field during reconstruction made the model less sensitive to the domain shift, as this gave better results in terms of RMSE for different undersampling ratios, but also visually with reconstructions more faithful to the fully sampled image. Hello everyone, my name is Orchun Gaksal and I am leading the Computer Asset Applications and Medicine Group at ETS Zurich Systems. I will present our work on reinforcement learning for controlling simulated musculoskeletal models. Simulations require several assumptions and simplifications. With machine learning, however, we aim to achieve simple, fast and stable controllers. Next, we studied the same 1D object abduction control using four muscles, seen here, that contribute to this motion. SDQL is not scalable that way. Any following experiments were conducted only using PPO. With the mean episode reward and loss, PPO4 muscles is again seen to converge. Here, we demonstrate the tracking of three sample test trajectories using four muscles. Average test errors are seen to increase slightly, but not majorly compared to single muscle case. Thank you all for listening.